So a few weeks ago, I showed you guys how to install Windows 11 LTSC, and a lot of people thought that it wouldn't make a very good desktop operating system, especially for gaming. So I decided we should probably test that. So that's what we're doing today. Stay tuned. So in our video a few weeks ago where I installed the evaluation version of Windows 11 Enterprise LTSC, one of the common arguments that I heard against using it as a regular desktop operating system was that it wasn't great for gaming. In fact, a lot of people said that it probably wasn't a great idea to use as a desktop operating system at all. I have my own opinions on that, but I'll save those for the end of the video. But in regards to whether or not it's a good replacement for Windows 11 Home or Pro for gaming, we can test that. But first, I gotta pay some bills. So check out today's sponsor. Are you still running Windows 11 unactivated because the license just costs too much? Then you should check out today's sponsor, VIP SCD Key, where you can get a valid Windows 11 license for around $20. Stop dealing with that stupid watermark and actually be able to change your desktop background with a valid license for Windows 11. Just go to the link in the description below and pick up a valid Windows 11 license key. During checkout, use the code CYBERCPU for a 25% discount. Once you have your key, go to your activation settings in Windows 11 and click the link that says Change Product Key. Enter the product key you just purchased and hit Activate. Now you don't have to deal with that stupid watermark. And check out the description for deals on not just Windows, but Office 2. Now, on with the video. So one thing I just have to say at the beginning of this video is that I realized I made a mistake in the last video by calling Windows 11 Enterprise LOT LTSC. It's not, it's IOT LTSC. Believe it or not, I actually knew that, but just kind of made a mistake. However, with that said, it was a pretty good mistake considering all the interaction I got in the video because I kind of lost count of how many times people pointed that mistake out. But yes, the proper name would be Windows 11 Enterprise IoT LTSC. The IoT stands for Internet of Things and the LTSC stands for Long Term Servicing Channel. Microsoft sure loves their acronyms. But the real question is, is this something that we can use in place of Windows 11 Home or Pro? Because many people in that video claimed that it wasn't a great idea. I mean, Ultimately, you have to get around the fact that you can't even buy a license for it in the first place. But if you read the comments in the last video, or you do a little research on Google, that limitation is pretty solvable. So, let's just assume for the sake of argument that the licensing issue wasn't an issue. Could you use Windows 11 LTSC as a daily driver operating system? So, to test this idea, I set it up the same way I would set up any gaming system. I installed all the apps that I would typically install like MSI Afterburner, Fan Control, and of course, Steam. After that, I set up numerous games and for the most part, it operated just like any other Windows 11 install. Everything just worked without a hitch. But considering the fact that this is a lighter version of Windows 11, I had to also see if there was really any benefit to running this instead of Windows 11 Home or Pro. So I tested numerous games at both 1080p and 1440p to find out if this is even worth your time to use LTSC over Windows Home and Pro. And the system I did this on was this one right here. It's an AMD Ryzen 7600 with 32 gigs of PC 6000 and an RTX 3060. So let's look at the benchmarks and see how it did. The first game we're looking at is Counter-Strike 2. People who are into FPS games will do anything to get any improvement in their frame rates. So a great argument for using LTSC would be a boost in performance in this game right here. In 1080p on Windows 11 Pro, we got a 236.9 average FPS and 112.5 1% low. When switching over to LTSC, we got a 251 average FPS with 102.2 1% low. This game gave us 5.8% improvement on our average frame rate, but we lost 9.3% in our frame timings. Then switching over to 1440p on Windows 11 Pro, we got a 163.7 average FPS with an 86.4 1% low. On LTSC, we got an average FPS of 184 and a 1% low of 91.9. 
So on 1440p, we got an 11.7% improvement in our average frame rates and a 6.2% improvement on our frame timings. These results were kind of surprising to me. I expected to see a bigger benefit at lower resolution, being that the CPU was working harder than the GPU at lower refresh rates. But that just wasn't the case in this game. The next game we're looking at is Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk is already a demanding game, but it's more demanding on the GPU side than the CPU side. So I don't know if running a lightweight version of Windows is going to help much in Cyberpunk, but let's see how it did. At 1080p on Windows 11 Pro, we got an average frame rate of 67.8 and a 1% low of 55.5. On LTSC, we got an average frame rate of 67.4 and a 1% low of 54.7. So this doesn't look like LTSC made much of a difference. We just lost 0.6% in our average frame rate and gained 1.5% in our frame timings. But both of those are within margin of error either way. So I would say this is kind of a tie. When switching over to 1440p on Windows 11 Pro, we got a 44.4 average frame rate and a 37.7 1% low. On LTSC, we got an average frame rate of 45.3 and a 1% low of 38.6. This one, like Counter-Strike, did better at 1440p than at 1080p. We got a 2% higher frame rate and our frame timings were 2.4% better. Now, while I consider anything 2% or lower as margin of error, our frame timings did get a slight improvement outside of margin of error, but not much. And again, it's interesting that we get our biggest benefit at 1440p and not 1080p. The next game we're looking at is Red Dead Redemption 2. This is another demanding game, but again, this one is still more demanding against the GPU instead of the CPU. So we might have similar results as we did with Cyberpunk, but Let's see how it did. At 1080p in Windows 11 Pro, we got an average frame rate of 78.1 and a 1% low of 64.8. On LTSC, we got an average frame rate of 77.8 and a 1% low of, believe it or not, 64.8, exactly the same. So our average frame rate lost 0.4%, which is obviously within margin of error, but our frame timings were identical. That just doesn't happen every day. I should probably buy a lottery ticket. When switching over to 1440p on Windows 11 Pro, we got an average frame rate of 64.2 and a 1% low of 54.1. On LTSC, we got an average frame rate of 66 and a 1% low of 55.8. So my original theory at this point was being completely blown out of the water. I thought these games would be performing much better in 1080p on LTSC, but that simply hasn't been the case. This is another example of 1440p seeing the most improvements with a 2.8% better average frame rate and a 3% better frame timing. The next game we're looking at is RoboCop. This is a new game that I put into my benchmarks because I wanted to get an Unreal Engine game that I could use. Unreal Engine always kind of seems a little unstable, if that makes any sense. So I thought this would be a good addition to this test with LTSC. So let's see how it did. At 1080p in Windows 11 Pro, we got a 64.4 average FPS and a 42.3 1% low. Now on LTSC, we got an average frame rate of 65.8 and a 1% low of 44.4. That's a 2.2% improvement in our average frame rate, which is just over margin of error, but a 4.8% improvement in our frame timings, which is pretty decent. Switching over now to 1440, on Windows 11 Pro, we got an average frame rate of 52.8 and a 1% low of 35.9. On LTSC, we got an average frame rate of 52.9 and a 1% low of 36.3. So in this game, we didn't do as good in 1440p as we have in previous games. We got a 0.2% improvement in our average frame rate and a 1.1% improvement in our frame timings, which is of course all within margin of error. These are the kind of results that I was expecting in all the games I tested. The next game we're looking at is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. With modern hardware, this title is a little bit more CPU dependent than GPU, but it still requires a good GPU. 
So hopefully we should get some performance improvements by using a lighter weight operating system like LTSC. So let's see how it did. At 1080p on Windows 11 Pro, we got an average frame rate of 159.9 and a 1% low of 132.9. Now on LTSC, we got an average frame rate of 161 with a 1% low of 138. That's a 0.7% improvement in our average frame rate and a 3.8% improvement in our frame timings. Our average frame rate was well within margin of error, but we did get a little boost in our frame timings, which is always good. Switching over to 1440p on Windows 11 Pro, we got a 115.3 average frame rate with a 1% low of 101.1. On LTSC, we saw an average frame rate of 117.4 and a 1% low of 105.3. So it looks like we're back to where we started with the 1440 getting more improvement than the 1080p. However, not by much. We got a 1.8% better average frame rate, which is still within margin of error, but a 4.1% improvement in our frame timings, which was just slightly better than 1080p, but still better. So we did get some improvements in our performance on LTSC, which I had no doubt we would. I'm just kind of surprised that it was mostly for 1440p and not 1080p. Typically a deep loaded operating system, which is what LTSC is, is kind of more helps the CPU than the GPU. But for some reason in this case, it seemed like the GPU really liked LTSC. So, should you use LTSC as a daily driver operating system? I think the way I would answer this question is, it kind of depends. If you're someone that always uses deep loaded copies of Windows, then LTSC I think is a better option than some of the community made deep loaded options for a couple of reasons. For one, it's kind of obvious. The ISO comes directly from Microsoft. So you're not downloading some shifty ISO created by some random guy on Reddit. And for two, deep loaded versions of Windows 11 just go too far in many cases. They remove way too much from the OS and in some cases actually cripple the operating system. However, with that said, that is an issue you could run into with LTSC as well. For instance, in several games, I got this error right here. I'm assuming it's because the game itself was using the Xbox app as a dependency. However, it didn't stop me from actually playing the game. And I didn't even see the error until after the game was closed. So it didn't actually affect any of the games themselves, or at least not that I know of. The other downside to using LTSC as a daily driver operating system is in the name, long-term servicing channel. Now, some people might consider that a benefit, but in reality, a daily driver desktop, it could kind of be a downside. You see, and this is why, Windows 11 LTSC is based on Windows 11 24H2. Now, while LTSC will be in support for 10 years, Windows 11 24H2 will only be in support for three years. Now, software publishers do not write their software for LTSC. So when Windows 11 24H2 goes out of support in three years, a lot of software publishers may drop support for 24H2. Even though LTSC is still in support, you still won't be able to install some software. However, the plus side to this is that Microsoft does release a new version of LTSC every two or three years. So you could always just upgrade to the new version of LTSC when that comes out. But that kind of defeats the purpose of long-term servicing channel, right? So my recommendation comes down to this. If you like to use deep loaded Windows installs, then I would use this one. It runs great. But if you don't, then just use Windows 11 Pro. And if you decide to stick with Windows 11 Pro, then check out this video here where I show you how to set up Windows 11 for gaming. And honestly, that video would work pretty well for LTSC too. But as always, you guys have a great day.